Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. I'm so sorry for my voice right now. I am currently sick, but that's not going to deter us from finishing this video. As you can probably already tell, I will be transforming one of these Kuku Harajuku girls into one of my childhood heroes, the Powerpuff Girls. These girls definitely made a huge impact on my childhood and I remember wanting to skip school just so I can watch them. So that's how you know it's extreme. For this video, I will be tackling Blossom, the the commander and the leader, and she's actually my favorite one. I definitely wanted to give them a futuristic space age vibe, and I was really really inspired by XJ9, Judy Jetson, and Mega Man. I wanted an amalgamation of these three. For some reason, I'm just so inspired by the Jetsons and the 1950s take on future. There's just something so amazing about it and so minimalistic. At the same time, it does really evoke the typical future look. So this is actually a sketch that I posted on my Instagram last year in May. As you can see, I've been wanting to start this project for such a long time, but I just never got the time to actually tackle it for some reason. I don't know, but there were some minor setbacks, but now it's time to create the perfect little girls. So this is the concept idea that I had for Blossom, but it's actually not the final one because I had to make a few changes here and there, like um, the orbs changing. I definitely didn't want to deviate so much from the simplistic aesthetic that the original girls had, but I wanted to mix in the 1950s idea of the future and space age themes to it. I really like this look and we are going to give her this long hair. It's gonna be amazing and I cannot wait to show you guys so let's go ahead and get into it. I will be using Love from Kuku Harajuku Girls for this project. I think that it's so obvious, when these dolls came out, everyone requested for Powerpuff Girls. And the first step is to try and cut all of her hair off. You guys should already know from my Betty Boop doll that these dolls heads are very very hard, like they're not like the usual soft vinyl. So she's gonna go through a hot bath to try and make her head squishy and so that it's easier to literally take all of the hair off. As you can see, it's a lot better, and I actually dipped her head in the hot water for a couple of times more, but I just take my long nose needle pliers, or whatever that's called, and I just completely remove the hair. And as usual, we take off our factory paint using acetone. And after her face is squeaky clean, I take my Mr. Super Clear, or MSC, and I prep her face for the repaint. Then I take my watercolor pencils to give the initial sketch for her features. I'm really liking the unique face shape of these dolls because this is when I can actually make those big eyes and I've grown fond of them. I want her eyes to be very clean and minimal, and I also want it to have a glowing look, so I'm gonna be playing around with a lot of gradients. I'm giving her purple eyeshadow because every time the girls close their eyes or it's semi-closed, it's always purple, so I thought maybe that's their eyeshadow or maybe that's their eyelids, I don't know, but we'll give her purple eyeshadow. <laughs> And here comes my favorite part is blacking out the pupil and giving the eyeliner. Oh my gosh, just for some reason this is my favorite part. Especially on Kuku Harajuku girls because they have such big heads and there's more ground to cover. <laughs> For the lips, I want it to be very soft because the eye is already very very dramatic, so I'm just going to be using a lot of pastels to complement her lips. And I'm going to use white acrylic paint to give her the eye shines and also to cover her sclera. And I'm just trying to emphasize the brow hairs a lot more in this part, and I'm also adding the gradient look with reds on her brows. I'm going over her iris again with pink acrylic paint because I thought the pencil work was a little too red looking. Like it wasn't pink and I'm going to just add white onto it to play around with the glow effect. 
Now I'm just rendering some details on her lips, just to give it more of a realistic look, and I'm actually going to render a lot of details throughout her face. And I really wanted to give her a smiling mouth for some reason, so I went ahead and gave her teeth to show that she's smiling. I wanted to give her an extra eye shines, which is a small heart, because I just thought it would be really, really cute, and you know, they're the Powerpuff Girls, so all they see is... Love, 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 love. And here I just added the lashes and they're great because they're very very bold and very very cartoony actually because they're very clean lines. I think I got them actually from Daiso and I'm running out. <laughs> So here I'm just adding the gloss to her eye shines, her iris, and also the sclera. I'm not doing it on the pupil because it is black and I really don't want that to reflect any light for photography. After her face is done, let's go ahead and tackle her costume. Because I wanted her costume to be very skin tight and look very plasticky, I'm actually going to be painting it on, but we do have to sand the underwear that she has molded on completely off. Then I used paper clay to cover her legs prior to the epoxy sculpt. I don't know if you guys know this, but epoxy sculpt is kind of expensive. And using all of that for the legs will be very, very hefty. So for now, we're going to use paper clay as a start, as an armature. And we're just going to cover the end with epoxy sculpt. So I just try to have the basic shape that I want, obviously a lot skinnier than the ending results because we are going to cover it in the end with epoxy sculpt for the smoother look, but this will work perfectly. So taking the epoxy sculpt, I mix the equal parts together and I cover one leg as an example. So here is a before and after of the leg, so let's go ahead and emulate that to the other one. I guess for me this was the most difficult and time consuming part because I wanted it to be perfect and smooth and I was actually working on this while I was working with Mulan. I went for this design because I thought it looks more like the girls' actual shoes and actual legs. So I thought it would be really really cool to kind of play around the gradients with this part. You guys, there is a lot of sanding with this project, so beware and please wear a mask if you try and do this. But sanding it is so satisfying in the end because it's also smooth and it blends in with her actual skin. Now I'm just going to be creating the orb and I'm also just using an epoxy sculpt for this one. And I trace the template so that it's all even. And I'm just smashing that epoxy sculpt there and making sure it's as smooth and clean as possible. While that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and start with painting her torso. And I'm just giving her this one-piece bikini type of look that is a turtleneck. And I thought it was very space agey. Then I paint the entire legs with white as a base and also as a primer. And here is the before and after of the gradient look. And I actually used an airbrush for this that ended up breaking after cleaning it. Um, so as you can see over here, I am currently airbrushing. However, for some reason, the end of the night, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna redo it, and I painted over the entire leg again with white. So pretty much, I broke the airbrush, or the airbrush was broken, and I it was left with a white piece again. I did not record any of that because I was already so frustrated. However, I managed to get the same effect with pastels. So I guess it just goes to show that you can still do anything, you know, even if you don't have the right materials. Because I didn't want to reorder the airbrush and have this video delayed again for two weeks or something. Then I go add gloss to her entire legs because this will literally make it look so futuristic, I think. And I'm also going to be painting the orbs on her ankles pink.
and then I paint her socks white. Or, you know what, in this case, it's her inner mechanisms. You know, it's not socks, it's her inner mechanism. <laughs> So I guess the burning question that I have is, what do you guys think of the Powerpuff Girls reboot? I personally love the fact that they rebooted it, however, I feel like it wasn't the greatest. I tried watching it, but I just really couldn't. I was just so disappointed, I guess, with the changes that they did. They do not crime fight anymore, they took out Miss Bellum, and there's a lot of changes that they did that I think um, original fans didn't really like. Can we talk about the cast? My gosh, justice for the original cast. But yeah, let me know your opinions down below because I would love to read them. I'm taking this black patent leather material and using it as her belt. Then I'm taking this pink plastic vinyl to use as her skirt, and this is literally going to be a circle skirt, very inspired by the Jetsons. I really wanted it to be very plasticky and transparent. Now I'm just adding some accessories like her choker and some knee pads to cover the cracking white paint on her knees, which is inevitable. And I also wanted to paint her nails. And for her hair, I really wanted to use yarn, but I know I wouldn't get the same effect that I want to, especially with the wind. So I got this from a local hair supply store, and I believe it was like $20, which is not so bad considering there's so many of it. It says that it's human hair. I doubt it, but maybe it is. I'm not sure, but it works well for Blossom, and it's the perfect color too. The main thing I wanted to achieve with her hair is the long length and also the bangs. I want her bangs to be perfect. And as you can see, I can actually use my straightener with it, so maybe it is human hair. Maybe, I don't know. Or just really good quality hair that I got it for very, very cheap. <laughs> And for her bow, I actually made this template that I'm going to be cutting out of the plastic vinyl, the same plastic vinyl as her skirt, and we're just going to make the bow out of it. She does have a hard barrette in the back of her head, but I'm actually going to use it on her bow. And now we're done. Sugar. Sugar. Spice. Spice. And lots of doll supplies. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl.
And once again, the day is saved. Thanks to me. And yes, that is me. <laughs>